Good morning, afternoon, friends. I hope you're doing really well. Thanks for your patience. I'm on a little bit late because I just did a hour and I guess 20 minute presentation, a little less than that at Marshall University, obviously virtually, um, to teach the next crop of dietitians from that area coming out into the world that know about health at every size, intuitive eating. And I just got done explaining a little bit about supportive eating to them. And so here we are to talk about it together here on our, um, um, a little channel here. So I hope you're having a great day and let's get started. So this week's topic is going to be supportive eating because as human beings, we're going to have bodies that um, need us to pay attention to their needs, right? And the number one thing that thwarts our ability to eat in a way that would um, help us to thrive. And now I'm going to say, here's my disclaimer, is that I do understand that some of us, honestly, we might be the season of a life where we're having a chronic health condition. And so the goal here isn't to like, put an expectation on you that you, um, if you just eat a certain way that you'll get rid of your diabetes or your fibromyalgia or your IBS or whatever, that's not how it works. You know, these are, um, these are chronic conditions, but we can be supportive to our bodies once we pay more attention to like what seems to digest better, or what gives us a little bit better energy, what seems to like even show either neutral or slight improvement. So I'm, this isn't a talk about like if everybody just does, you know, food is medicine, they'll cure all their problems. And, you know, I don't believe in that whatsoever. I do believe that eating can be supportive. And for some people, it improves a lot of conditions. And for some people, it doesn't do anything. And even the thought about that makes things worse. So please assess and acknowledge where you're at, um, you know, with this information. So the thing is, one of the number one things that definitely thwarts our ability to um, add in gentle nutrition is this idea that there's a right way to do it and that we have to be perfect about it every day. And that's not what we're trying to accomplish. You know, gentle nutrition is really about what can I add in that makes sense? Or what do I need to maybe, let's say you have diabetes. I work with a lot of people and doing this whole approach with metabolic issues. And there are some parts of the day that you may need to like, um, balance your protein, carbs, and fat different than you, what you would have if you didn't have it. But that doesn't mean you don't eat carbs or sugar. It just means that we have to learn the body's edges of what it can digest and metabolize and, and um, get satisfaction from and help you manage the condition in a way that's not obsessive making. That's just the bottom line. And that takes experimentation. That takes a lot of patience, but it doesn't have to take forever. I mean, it might take you three or six months, but that's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket to being able to eat in a way that's supportive and you feel like that you're progressing with your ability to trust the body you've got. All right. So that's what supportive eating is really about. It's about looking at the, the intersections of physical, mental, emotional, even spiritual well-being that helps you, um, again, promote health and wellness the best you can in the circumstances and in the capacity you have. This is what this is really about. So I want you to take a minute. Those who are watching live, thank you so much for coming live. I want you to take a minute to think about here's the health condition either I've been told I have or I think I might have. And think about the recommendations have you that you got. Did you ever go to the, the doctor for say and get like, you know, your triglycerides are high, your cholesterol's all high, and they tell you like lose weight, eat less sugar, exercise more, and nobody even ever assessed you <laughs> to like what is your current um like day-to-day -day, big picture like what how do you actually eat and move you know whatever it is you do did anybody assess that if the answer is no hard stop start to assess like wait a minute they're telling me to eat no sugar one how is that possible it's not and two i don't think that i actually eat a lot of like added sugar every single meal so what's what's that about that recommendation about it's because they don't have time to sit with you and do a a proper and appropriate nutrition assessment of like the big picture of your eating and if there's any places that may or may not be beneficial. So the next step would be like, well, you know, like what other things might help, let's say, um, decrease my triglycerides without me having to make radical food changes since I don't really eat in a way that they're suggesting I do anyway. And you want to look at like, well, what are the recommendations without food restriction? You know, is it um, higher powered fish oil, or is it, um, 
some kind of supplement like berberine or is it, and these are all things don't go do just because I'm saying it. You need to get um, assessed if they're safe for you. If there's any other interactions with any other medications or circumstances. It's not good for everybody all the time. More fiber. Um, for me, I see one of the things that we're really working on with everybody is to open up our window of tolerance so we're less in fight or flight or in a dissociated state because when you're in your window, you digest and um, heal. That's just the place in your body's perception of threat or safety that we do physical healing. So, you know, we got to work on that too. You can do all the fiber in the world you want, but if you always feel like a tiger's chasing you and you can never get a day off and um, you feel like that, like your whole world will fall apart if you like slow down, that's the bigger issue. Not, you don't have enough fiber in your diet. So anyway, that's what I want us to look at. And that's your assessment homework is to um, look at like, if you do have a situation and what have been the knee jerk recommendations that actually kind of were triggering. And is there anything else out there that you've heard of that maybe you're curious about that would be a do no harm approach and that are additive and not subtractive that you could consider. You don't have to do anything. I'm not prescribing anybody to do anything. I'm not here to assess anybody's individual stuff. This is just a video, but it gives you some things to think about. Like what is accessible to me that also doesn't trigger feelings of like, I'm going to be restricted. So I got a rebellion eat or like, I just don't know what to do. So I'm doing nothing. Those are all threat responses when we don't feel safe or we feel overwhelmed. So if you're in that state, it's best not to make changes. It's best to actually get back into some sense of safety and connection so your brain can be more online, you can have more self-compassion, and then go at a pace that you can manage with this. If you need some help, please reach out to us. We have you know, dietitians all over the place now that can help you with those kind of things and help you assess like what's, what's viable, what's accessible, what makes sense for any given place you're at. And um, yeah. So we're going to continue more about this supportive eating. Some of the ways to I'm going to give you a lot of prompts this week about how you talk to yourself. If you're saying good feed, bad food, if you're saying I'm going to eat healthy and then you're not eating healthy, these are all triggers to more of the same dysfunction. So we're going to work on changing our language this week as well. So feel free in the comments to have any questions you have about um, health concerns, movement concerns. Of course, I can't do any individual medical nutrition therapy because um, I can't do that obviously um, without you know being in a, a client practitioner relationship but I will give you um, a start on how to maybe um, find out what resources you can access you know to kind of get you started so please don't be afraid to just put some comments below and I'm happy to chat you know here and then send you on your way to um, something that's safe and helpful to you so all right. Thank you all so very much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And this is the week that if you have questions about health, nutrition, please be putting them in the comments. And again, I'll do my best to um, answer things appropriately. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you. I am going to do another video this week. Um, I'll probably do one Friday because I want to do a little wrap up of like the questions I get this week and the concerns and, and all that. So, and, and see if you want to check back in as to what you discovered and what triggers you and what's helpful to you and what isn't. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you everybody who watches the replay. I'll see you on Friday. Bye for now.